in these studies, <coughs> it is so important to read Holy Scripture. These studies are critical in understanding the truths that are given to us by Almighty God. And this one focuses on Jesus' compassion. It's based on Mark chapter 1, verse 21 to 34, and Mark 1, verse 40 to chapter 2, verse 12. <coughs> also, we look at Psalm 103, verses 1 to 8. I always remember in my ministry Jesus' first words in Mark 1.15 The time has come. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent and believe the gospel. Believe the good news. And it's good news for our eternal life. I remember the cross across the crib when we remember Jesus and his birth, we also see the cross across the crib. Jesus came with the Father's mission in John 10:11. <coughs> I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And uh, as we reflect uh, when we think of Easter, we remember that Jesus brings us. He brings us back to the Father through his ministry and his passion. Friends again with the Father. Jesus, the eternal second person of Yahweh, I also reflect on a lot of scripture, which is all in context. John 16, verse 7, when Jesus said, Unless I go, unless I go, the counsel of the Holy Spirit will not come. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regards to sin, where people do not believe, in regard to righteousness, because I go to the Father and you'll see me no longer. You won't see him until your life is over and you stand before him face to face with him in his eternity. And of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. And I also remember, and it's also in context, with this wonderful thought and teaching on Jesus' compassion. Jesus' compassion. John 17, 1 to 5. Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son. Your Son glorified you, and you granted him authority over all people. And he granted eternal life to all those that you gave him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, Father, and Jesus, your Son, whom you sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. We've got to ask ourselves, are we completing the work and doing the work that the Lord Jesus has given you and me? Jesus truly is the Alpha and Omega, the glorious Lord. And I've got to ask the question, are we in the Father's will, truly faithful and obedient in our ministry and our service? Is our church faithful 
in ministry and service? Or is the church moving towards liberal existential postmodern thought which leads us away from the narrow way? In Luke 24, verse 27, remember Jesus told all of the, of the words that the prophets of the Old Testament scripture said about him. And I love the Isaiah 11, 1 to 5 reference. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. It's on Jesus. It was on Jesus at his baptism. Remember in our previous study? The spirit of wisdom, of understanding, of counsel, of power, of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the reverencing of Jesus' authority. And remember that in Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven and earth has been given been given to Jesus and he delights in doing his father's will and so we come to Mark chapter 1 verse 29 where Jesus goes to Simon and Andrew's house and Simon's mother-in-law is ill and Jesus heals her the Greek word for heals there is therapeusin to cure. He cured her. And he also cured many other who many other who people who were sick. And they saw Jesus' compassion. They saw his deeds. They heard his words. And many believed in him. In Psalm one hundred and three, Jesus uh, he, he, was, he was David's redeemer, King David's redeemer. And this is all seen by David in Psalm 110, verse 1, where we read, The Lord said to my Lord, The Lord is in capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And it means the Trinity. It means Yahweh the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit speaking in unity to Jesus through the Holy Spirit to David. You'll notice that the word Lord to my Lord, it's capital L, small O-R-D. Psalm 103 teaches, Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise his holy name who forgives your sins, who redeems your life from the pit. We've already mentioned in previous studies that Jesus came to redeem, to buy us back and to bring us back to the Father. In Psalm 103 verse 8, The Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and abounding in love. But it's only that condition if you really are in the will of the Father. And we come to that wonderful word compassion again. It's made up of a prefix of the letters C-O-M. And let's define that. Let's define the word compassion. The prefix C-O-M simply means, and you look it up in the dictionary, all together in agreement in unity. And the word passion defined in the dictionary is strong attitude of love and care. It's to do with accurate empathy. It's to do with fully understanding and comprehending the person's situation, the person's pain, the negative emotions that people have, 
There are seven negative, primary negative emotions. Helplessness, loneliness, worthlessness, hopelessness, sadness, fear and hurt. And Jesus spoke about that in his great compassion. He spoke about that in Matthew eleven twenty eight onwards. When he said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light because I'm going to carry, I'm going to carry you. I always remember him in that uh, footprints, that beautiful uh, article on footprints where where you see the, the footprints in the sand. And the person who loved Jesus said, you abandoned me, Lord. And he said, no, my son, when you were weary and burdened, I carried you. The footprints in the sand were mine, carrying you. (coughs) And we also remember when Jesus healed many who were sick and who were possessed by demons. He would not let the demons speak. We saw that in Mark 1 verse 25 where he told the demons be quiet and we know Jesus we know Jesus by listening to his words and seeing his deeds written in Holy Scripture and as I focus and it's uh, further on in the study in Mark 1:40 the man with leprosy. If you are willing, you can make me clean. The Greek word there is katharise. It's where we get the uh, English word catharsis or to purge, purify or cleanse. Jesus said, I am willing. Jesus, our Lord of great compassion, And Jesus touched him and he broke the ceremonial law. The ceremonial law of Leviticus 13 verse 45 on. The man was unclean. But we see Jesus' compassion overcoming the the old covenant law. I think it was Matthew 5, 17. Jesus said that I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfil it. Came to fulfil the old covenant law. And the devil then is so upset with the Lord. The devil is so upset with Jesus that he brings conflict. And the conflict starts in Mark chapter 2 verse 1. The beginning of conflict. Jesus is in Capernaum again. And many were, many heard, many heard his words and saw his deeds. And we remember, don't we, that faith comes from hearing the word. And in Mark 2 verse 2, that so many gathered outside the room, there was no room inside. It was totally crowded. No room outside the door. There's a question I ask, you know. In my ministry I ask, do do we in our lives and our ministry in our church ever crowd others out from seeing Jesus? From seeing Jesus spiritually? In the Lord's Prayer, your will be done. Jesus was always in the will of his Father. Are we truly 
Are you in the will of the Father in all you think and do and say? I find it difficult sometimes to be truly in the will of my Father in all that I think and do and say. But we always have to be true to Holy Scripture. Are you always holy and truly true to Holy Scripture? In Mark chapter 2 verse 5, Jesus knows true faith has been given by the men. These men would have heard Jesus' words. They were convicted of the real truth of Jesus that all that he said and did. The Holy Spirit would have inspired them. Spiritual inspiration. And I see this, this truth that we're going to look at as an enacted parable. An enacted parable. An illustration of spiritual responsiveness. He, they dug through the roof. They dug through the roof. It, it's an enacted parable of faithfulness from above from on the roof and leading, lending, dropping the man down in front of Jesus. For what Jesus was to do actually was faith, their faith in the one who came from above, the one from heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. And uh, to the paralytic, Jesus said, Your sins are forgiven. And you know, he says that to us. Your sins are forgiven. When you truly believe in a really fair dinkum in your sins, being asking for repentance. And in Mark 2, chapter verses 6 to 8, The Pharisees are thinking Jesus is blaspheming. That word blaspheme means to, to, to dishonour, to desecrate, to profane, pollute the sacred character of Almighty God. The Pharisees are thinking Jesus is blaspheming. But in fact, the Pharisees are acting in unbelief. The Pharisees are the ones who are actually blaspheming. They are profaning the sacred character of Almighty God's Son. The men and the paralytic are acting in total belief. Total belief. We see later in Mark chapter 4, and we'll look at that later on in our studies, concerning their thinking. Mark records they will be ever seeing and not perceiving and ever hearing and not understanding and if they did they would be they would turn and be forgiven but the men and the paralytic had seen Jesus deeds and heard Jesus words and through the inspiration of Jesus words they turned and believed. They were not deceived by Satan. They trusted Jesus to heal. And the Pharisees had no conviction of guilt. 
They were the ones who definitely were blaspheming against the Lord. The Pharisees' unbelief was seen forcefully about five months later in Jesus' ministry in Mark chapter 3 where the Pharisees said that Jesus cast out demons by Beelzebub, that is, exalted master, the prince of demons. And Jesus' reply was this, to sin against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. The sinning against the Holy Spirit, you're never forgiven. We have to be so careful that we don't go anywhere near that kind of error. And I just want to conclude with the truth from John 10:27, which we will look at later on in our studies. That Jesus said, and it's a wonderful comfort to us, Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. May the Lord bless you and keep you as we remember these truths and these studies that we are working through. For they are life, eternal life.